welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for returning for another segment of Health Professional Radio. We're going to be speaking with Jonathan Sade, Senior Vice President of Immunology and Fibrosis Development, Global Drug Development at Bristol Myers Squibb. He's going to discuss the recent approval of Sotectu for or moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Jonathan Sade. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, tell us a bit about yourself and your role at Bristol Myers Squibb. Great. Uh, well, thank you for having me here, Neil. Uh, glad to talk to you about uh, Sutiktu. Uh, a bit about myself. I'm a uh, clinician scientist. I trained originally as a pulmonary and critical care physician. I started my career in, in academia at Brigham and Women's Hospital and uh, transitioned to, to industry a few years later because I thought I could actually make a a bigger impact on a impact on a broader uh, broader patient population, and it's been uh, it's been a great experience for me uh, over the past few years. I uh, have worked in a variety of uh, areas over the years uh, in what we broadly call immunology, pulmonary initially, but then uh, rheumatology, dermatology, GI, other other areas within immunology, both uh, early and late development. And I've been here at uh, BMS for the past three and a half years, and as you said, I am the uh, leader of the Immunology and Fibrosis Development Organization. The moderate to severe plaque psoriasis community, what is plaque psoriasis? Who's affected and how does it affect quality of life? Good question. So uh, plaque psoriasis, is, we discussed it as an immune-mediated uh, condition that affects actually multiple systems uh, in the body. It's a systemic uh, disease, but uh, the area that's most affected is the skin, the largest organ uh, in the body. And what you see in these patients are, are plaque uh, erythematous uh, plaques throughout the body that can be seen in any, uh, any part of, uh, of the body uh, that cause uh, itch, uh, discomfort, as well as uh, you know, our, our discomfort uh, from a social perspective to patients who uh, don't want the plaques to be seen are embarrassed by it and uh, uh, try and cover it, uh, don't, don't go out, don't uh, uh, go to the beach with it. And so it affects uh, both their, uh, their quality of life from you know, the, the feeling of those plaques as well as their social uh, life. So uh, clearly a very, very important uh, condition that affects more than the skin, uh, multiple uh, systems in the body, including cardiovascular, uh, endocrine, and others. Being that it's an immune-related disorder, disease, can it present symptoms at any age, or is there some point at which uh, symptoms normally appear? It can present at any age. Uh, most do present earlier uh, in life, but it can actually present for the first time later in life as well. This recent FDA approval of SOTIC2, what does that mean for this community? I think this is a really important uh, breakthrough for patients with uh, psoriasis. And it's important to remember that there hasn't been much uh, innovation in this field in, in probably about about a decade, and, and, and importantly in the area of uh, oral therapies for patients with psoriasis. Uh, there is an unmet need, a gap here in how we treat uh, these patients. There's, there's very effective therapies that are biologic, so injectable, uh, therapies and, and many patients with psoriasis just don't want to take these injectables. And so many of them, over 50%, actually take topical therapies uh, to treat their systemic disease. That, that is inappropriate. That doesn't treat the systemic aspects uh, of the disease, doesn't even treat uh, the skin manifestations of their uh, disease appropriately. So there is an unmet need and a gap here in an effective, safe, oral therapy, and that is exactly the breakthrough that we achieved here with Sutictu. We developed a, a safe, effective, and tolerable oral therapy uh, that we think can be the new oral standard of care for these patients. There have been no effective oral treatments thus far. So the, there are therapies, there are oral therapies, mm -hmm. actually, and the most commonly used one here in the U.S. is, is a Premalast. Uh, uh, it is uh, moderate, modestly effective uh, and is approved for this treatment. It is the most commonly used drug. Uh, what we were able to show in this program is not only that Sutictu uh, was very effective when you compared it to placebo, but we also uh, compared it to a premolast. We had a head-to-head -head, uh, in, in both of our pivotal trials. We, uh, we tested it in a head-to-head -head fashion against a premolast, and we saw that it was 
superior in its in its efficacy, significantly superior to uh, a premolast that uh, had a very favorable safety profile and also very tolerable. It's important to remember that the issue that many patients uh, who take a premolast uh, complain of is is tolerability issues, GI uh, complaints, nausea, vomiting, and other you know, GI complaints, and we did not see that at all with Sutecto. So, so we think that there is here significant innovation and improvement over the current uh, available therapies. Do you have plans on bringing Sutecto to other countries? Yes. Yeah, so we uh, approved the drug, as you know, first in the U.S. Uh, mm-hmm. and then shortly after it was approved in Japan. Uh, and now we're planning to get this drug approved and, and launched across the globe. Any any country uh, where BMS has a uh, presence in, which is most countries around the world, but we do plan to get this drug approved. We're in, we're in uh, you know, uh, regulatory discussions with, with all those countries right now, and, and we hope that by uh, next year it will be approved and available for patients all over the world. When you say you didn't see any of the, uh, the effects that patients are unwilling to deal with in Sotictu, are you talking about none of those uh, safety issues or uh, side effect issues whatsoever or significantly milder or less frequent than in other treatments? So, so let me clarify the safety point. Uh, so any immune-mediated uh, drug out there uh, will have some impact on, on patients' immune system and therefore be associated with a variety of adverse events. The most commonly seen one is infections, viral infections. And we certainly uh, did see that. Uh, uh, but overall, the safety profile of Sutictu is actually very favorable. Uh, and when you, when you compare it to, to placebo or to the active comparator of Premilas, you see a very favorable pro- profile. You do see some of these adverse events, uh, but they are very tolerable and, man- and easily manageable. Most of them were mild to moderate. Uh, I pointed out uh, the, the um, <clears throat> tolerability point, which is the nausea and vomiting uh, that is seen often with a premolas, and we did, we did not see that or saw very few cases of that uh, with Sutictu. Are you studying Sutictu in other diseases? Do you think that it will be uh, effective in them as well? That's a really important question, Neil. Uh, I think it's important to remember that uh, Sutictu, uh, we refer to Sutictu as a pipeline in a pill. And the reason we say that is because it inhibits very effectively the TIC2 pathway and all conditions associated with that pathway. Uh, what I mean by that is there's a few key immune pathways that are inhibited by TIC2. It's IL-12, IL-23, and type 1 interferons. And there's multiple conditions uh, that are associated with these pathways, and, they, uh, and they're and they quite broad. It could be in dermatology, as in psoriasis, our lead indication, but also in rheumatology and gastroenterology and a variety of other uh, indications or, or conditions. We are developing Sutic2 in other conditions, the two other areas that we have or plan to start phase three programs uh, on right now are psoriatic arthritis and systemic lupus. Uh, we have a phase three ongoing with uh, psoriatic arthritis and systemic lupus, a phase three program is about to start. Uh, we have phase two studies, proof of concept studies ongoing in inflammatory bowel diseases and plans for a long list of other indications where we think that this drug could benefit patients. Give us a website where our listeners can learn much more. The website is sutiktu.com. Sutiktu is spelled S-O-T-Y-K-T-U.com. Jonathan, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you, Neil. It was great talking to you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Jonathan Sada. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast, listen in, download at Anchor Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 